the uh, you watch cricket, don't you? I watched a little bit, yeah. You a cricket guy? I love cricket, man. Yeah, yeah. I um. It's probably. disappointing though, in the end. It sucks. It sucks. I just Australia sucks so much at cricket at the moment. It's just very disappointing. Um, I went to school with Manus. Yeah. Labrashani. Really? Yeah. Well, there you go. Who's that our boy? Fucking hell, yeah. mate. Who else do you go to school with? That plays cricket. I don't know. I don't know any cricketers. Yeah. Okay. Um, Samu, Krevi. Okay. Wolbies. Right. Um. I think that's it for the oldies thing. So you did go to an all boys school? No, it was mixed actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Charlotte Kazakh? Number nah. sevens? Oh, no, nah, I don't know. No. Nah. All right, hold on. Um, Cherry Buffett names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, what am I? What am I doing? I'm trying to find the cricket intro. Channel nine. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it gets actual like Yeah, there we go. We're gonna hit you up first. Uh, probably. <laughs> Are <Probably>, right? <laughs> you your royalties? Yes. Fuck him there. I think if I ever had like an intro, it would be this. Yeah, it's such a good intro. Yeah. Please transfer me one dollar fifty cents. <laughs> da, 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 da. And Hi, welcome to, welcome to uh, Muscle Nerds episode episode three, uh, the podcast that we have on this week. We have uh, Mr. Joe. How do you say your last name? Ag- Agresta. Agresta. There we go, Mr. Joe Agresta from. Um, from Science of Fitness down at uh, down at West End. Introduce yourself, Joe. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> first time podcast, actually, so I'm yeah. super excited. Uh, mate, we are... My buddy and I, Rory Maguire, run a gym called Science Fitness, and basically we do predominantly group fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, over the last four or five years, we've done group fitness, S&C, that type of stuff. Yep. And most recently, we're kind of developing um, uh, our new program, which features exercise physiology, physiotherapy... Um, a little bit more of the fit over 50s type style classes because we've started to realize while we might be doing SNC and group fitness for the fitter populations, mm-hmm. um, we want to be able to serve all populations and yep. have a kind of progression model for people to come in from start. Let's say they're, you know, coming off a bed or very injured or coming back from a big hiatus. Yeah. And be able to help them throughout their fitness journey, say. Cool. So it's about, you know, getting the right team of people involved to be able to take them through that journey and not just serving the the higher end, I suppose, of, of fitness or sporting people. Okay, cool. So I guess talk us a little bit through your name, obviously Science of Fitness. Yeah. Is there a little bit of background in that? Yeah. So um, it's funny, our uh, original business partner actually came up with the name. Okay. Oh, so he's not in it anymore? Not in it anymore. Um, but he had done, I don't know, three or four different human movements type degrees. He's a little bit older than us. Okay. And What, um, what, what had he done? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, he'd done movement science. He'd done one of the things over in Perth. I think oh, at well. Edith Cowan, or yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Okay, um, he was originally a Cairo. Ah, okay, yeah. There's a lot of sports guys going around. At the moment. Yeah, so yeah. start off with Cairo, and then he went to more like human movement, yeah, and human medicine and stuff. He did a lot of um, full check type work. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then also kind of bridged a lot of his work off stop chasing pain. Um, I forget the guy's actual name. Oh uh, yeah, he's he's like quite prominent on um on Instagram. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, so cool. that type of you know holistic medicine, human movement type stuff, mm-hmm. not really the traditional, you know, hypertrophy strength yeah, type yeah, stuff. Yeah. And one day we were mucking around with names and you just kind of threw it out there and Roy and I looked at him and said, nah, nah. Yeah, that's nah. shit. Yeah, that's shit. Nah. <laughs> and then um, yeah, a few like coffee dates later and we were like, we got nothing better. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's kind of hard to have like an actual name that sort of like means something, but it isn't like, I don't know, almost just like real cliche as well. Yeah. 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 And, you know, Rory, my business partner, um, doing human movement, done human movement science. I personally didn't go through uni. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, there you go. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm the, <laughs> I'm the old one out here. Um, so the, from the original three, there was two from three. And mm-hmm. I um, I went down the S&C, Australian Strength and Conditioning type route. Mm-hmm. Um, I think predominantly because I didn't really focus that on much on school and I wasn't really great in exams. I didn't really kind of vibe it. What were you, what were you good at in school? 
I think more the the practical side of things. Okay. Like not necessarily, you know, good in the gym. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I had a very keen eye on watching someone do something and then applying yeah. it. Okay, that's that's kind of cool, isn't it? Because it's like I know there's a massive difference between obviously like a good coach and a good athlete, mm. and I, I feel like I'm the exact same too. It's like you can see why something's breaking down, but I can't actually fucking do it. Yeah, that's worse, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that reflects in my golf skills as well because <laughs> I'm not actually. We'll the go best. back to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So um, yeah, cool. Right. And um, so yeah, then you know, science fitness, the name just kind of stuck, and we we're like, cool, let's we've got nothing better, let's roll with it. Yep. And then um, from that we got the the abbreviation SOF, mm-hmm. SOF, and then from there it was kind of like you know this this has a ring to it. So yeah, very cool. Just putting it out there, you haven't followed me back on your business page yet. To, uh, <laughs> pause, I'll, put, the, uh, I'll pause the podcast. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put that down to Tom. Like, like, is it Tom that's your business? Yeah. Put that on the notes. He's just writing it in his notes, just just for everyone out there. Follow so I'm, so I'm <laughs> I mean, because I got a follow from your personal page. I, I just thought I'd mention it. I'll just call him out. <laughs> Bring it up in episode four at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, very cool. So I guess um, you've got so your business partner as well, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so... There was one, uh, his name is Chris. Chris, yeah. And the current one is Rory. Oh, sorry, Rory. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, um, so we've got another fella at the moment, Kieran, okay. who's coming on board. Is he, so uh, the fella that's on your Instagram page quite a lot with like like the real black hair, is that him? So or? That's, that's Rory. That's Rory, okay, yeah. cool, yeah. And uh, so he's one of the, the OGs. The OGs. And then uh, Kieran, who's his brother, who was originally doing his stuff in Perth, so he mm-hmm. did his oh, um, okay, cool. master's in SNC over at Edith Cowan, yeah. he finished off his, um, I guess, master's, and then started to come over, helped yep. us out with our education, and yeah, our Yeah, awesome, awesome, okay, so you got, so you got, obviously, like, a real big house of, um, obviously, like, personal education, and that sort of stuff that you can, like, refer out to, yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, where Kieran really excels is in that can kind of continuing education, mm-hmm. he holds a high high standard with all the staff and, and yep. how they can take them forward in PD and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm a little bit more of the operations side of the business. Yeah. Um, I like to just kind of knuckle down and tick the lists, yeah, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's always the shit that sort of gets pushed pushed behind as well, or like pushed aside, and yeah. that's always the stuff that gets a lot of people in trouble when they don't do their admin. Dot yeah. the E's. Yeah. Dot the E's. Yeah, well, like, dot the E's like the French people, but uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, okay, I know cool. where you're going. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, mate, he's, you know, he's fantastic at that sort of stuff, and you know, he kind of runs that, whereas I do more of the paying the bills and okay. the boring shit, you know? Oh, mate, that is, that is boring, but I mean, you've got to spend money to make money as well, right? Yeah. I mean, talk us a little bit through, because like, how old are you? 24. 24, okay, and so you, you own a, you've owned a business or co-owned a business for like the last five years. Yeah, so... Talk we, us through um, that, like what was the actual initial process? Because I mean, a lot of people like to think that they want to open up a gym mm. and then they uh they just find out that it's a whole lot more shit that they actually sort yeah of... yeah so chris i forget his exact age but he was mm, early 30s mm-hmm. okay a couple years ago yeah 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 yeah. rory's four or five years older than me oh okay so yeah, there's yeah. a bit of a kind of four to five year gap yeah between each person cool and um so i was 19 i think when we signed the first lease yeah um naive as anything may i can imagine fuck that's hectic like i even remember back to when i first signed my own lease just like on a rental agreement and mm. i was like 18 mm. i just remember having this like overarching feeling of just like doom yeah. for like for like six months because i was like holy fuck if anything goes wrong with this place I'm it, fucked. that's it yeah they're gonna put my head on the server yeah literally literally <laughs> is that what you kind of felt like that's what i felt like but um <laughs> Hey, honest, 19, yeah. that's awesome. So uh, we, we laughed about it a couple of weeks ago where we thought like, how do we actually pay the bills? Like, <laughs> we don't actually know just, how you pay the bills. How, like, how did that work? So yeah. we, um, <laughs> do you mean back then or now? Oh, <laughs> we've got a little bit better at it. Yeah, okay, I'll totally um, say. You'd be five years later. No, yeah. I hope so. But uh, yeah, so we, we kind of started off as, I guess, contractors, if you will, because okay. I'm purely just naivety and inexperience yeah 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 and then um we had three staff at the time running kind of maybe four to five group sessions a week mm-hmm. um and then from there we kind of went all right build up our client base build up our client base so to pre- kind of preface this a couple months prior um we were both working in other gyms we'd mm-hmm. been there for i'd been there for two years and i did my set three set four for a year, or a year and a half prior so i had done my I guess, set three, set four through school. Yeah. Year 11, year 12. Oh, okay, cool. So you did it 
quite young. Yeah. yeah. And I was lucky that the school offered an internship at the time. Oh, mate, that's even better, right? So, so what you said, is that East Boys High? Was that State High. Brisbane State High. High. Okay. So cool. through grade 11, grade 12, I got to work one day a week at the gym. They're just, you know, hey, how you going? Clean yeah. toilets, say yeah. hi to people, that sort of shit. But I mean, that's the stuff that also gets lost at the moment as well. Everyone yeah. wants to jump like straight into your fucking training athletes. And yeah. you're like, mate, you got to clean the fucking toilets and put the weights away first. Yeah. Mate, it's so essential. And um, so about two years there of, you know, going around saying hi to people and, you know, you get all these different types of clients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some you might have to show how to use the stepper. Okay, so you were more like a uh, like gym staff as opposed to like a PT? Yeah, yeah so okay, while cool. I was doing my yeah. training, I just, you know, show someone how to use a lap pull down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That type of stuff. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, and then two years after that, I had a friend of a friend who offered me a gig at one of his gyms at Steps Fitness in St. Lucia. Okay, cool. Myself. St. Lucia, yeah, yeah. It's oh. kind of like... Uh, Mate, I'm new sort to Brisbane, right. so you're going to have to put it... Kind of like in Drapilly way, but... Oh, sort of, yeah, so out, out, yeah, yeah, out that way, right. And um, so I, that was, you know, real scary. I was probably more scared doing that than signing the lease, working for myself, knowing that if I didn't get money, I'd have to pay rent. Yeah, I mean, are you were you living out of home at the time as well? Or no, nah. still, still at home, but it was more yeah. the... Like, I think the rent was $220 or something yeah. like that. I was like, oh, shit, what if I don't get, you know, Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the biggest thing, hey... And um, so after that, I was I said, no, nah, I'm going to do it. And I started doing like, you know, 40, 50 sessions at not much money per session, but you know, yeah. doing my quantity, yeah, if you will. And then um, two years after that, Rory goes, because he had his own clientele as well, mate, let's yeah. give this a crack. We gave it a crack and yeah, seems to have been working okay. Oh, this so is your far. uncle. There you go. Yeah, cool. So. so, I mean, like you've, you've recently just, um, so you've got two locations. Yep. That's, yep. that's pretty hectic. So, how many members have you got at each at each location? Um, mate, the way it works, we don't really have like location A, location B. The way our platform sort of works is you sign up for both, mm-hmm. and you have options for both. So one okay, is cool. more uh, restorative, one is more introductory level type stuff. So it might be a yoga, a Pilates, a really beginner level move session, which we call kind of like 15, 20 minutes of strength. Yeah. 15, 20 minutes of kind of movement based conditioning. Yep. Um, which is what we call like a level one, level two out of five, mm-hmm. easy stuff. And then we have the other location where we do the more meat and potatoes type stuff, which is okay. squats, lifts, all, all, the the all the good shit. All the good um, shit. All the good shit. It's Mate, probably, that, you know, 240, something like that, 250, 240 members. It's pretty good. So if anyone wants some business advice, head to Joe. <laughs> he knows how to do it. Mate, that's that's pretty impressive owning, or oh, like pretty much like owning your own business at, mm. at 24, 25. Mm. Having that many members must be, must be kicking. Yeah, no, it's really fun. It's like um, I kind of, I kind of love the pressure that it puts on you because to actually make decisions, to or? make decisions, and yeah. to really, you know, you're accountable. No one else's, mate. So if I, you know, decide one day oh, I'm gonna be a bit lazy, and then something doesn't work, it's it's my fault. I yeah, 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 else. yeah. I mean, well, that's really cool though, because even just like to bring it to like normal life is like a lot of people just don't want to accept the responsibility of mm. like being their own fault mm. I always think that there's like two types of people in the world you know one that's just going to be like nah it's not my fault and mm. the other people that actually accept the blame so yeah that's, that's pretty cool yeah and you know there's there's nothing like if you know, if you've got X amount of rent and etc etc and if you don't show up and do the work yeah you know it's all You're the crumbling down yeah yeah okay that's yeah that's pretty hectic so I guess overheads are pretty big as well you don't have to say but yeah, yeah like they're pretty pretty hectic bigger than five years ago put it that way yeah <laughs> Mate, you've got to, uh, like I said, you've got to earn, spend money to make money, right? Mm. So um, I guess, how, tell us a little bit about your staff then. So like, what's the what's the sort of process of that? Because I mean, science and fitness, obviously, you're going to have, like, you want them to have some sort of degree. Is yeah. that how it goes? Or Yeah, so it's funny. Um, out of all the staff, whether they be casual or full-time, yep. I'm the only one who doesn't have a degree. So <laughs> we're probably going to keep it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> You get in first, you don't have to. You yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so uh, the way our process kind of works with, with staff, so there's um, the two physios who run out of a company called All Sports. Okay. Um, Talia and Izzy. Yep. So they're both um, physio degrees. They've done a couple of years in the industry. Yep. They're technically uh, subbies, yep. if you will. Okay. Um, and how we like to approach is if someone comes in for initial screening, they mm-hmm. see the physios for just a general screening, or they see one of us. Mm-hmm. From there, if it's more of a uh, 
special populations client, let's say, mm -hmm. they would go on to see Francesca, yep. who's the Alex exercise physiologist. Okay, she's cool. done an exercise degree, I think it was a QT. Oh, cool. Yeah. So she so she deals with like all, all that sort of chronic sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she sees all, all that sort of stuff, wherever it's more, I guess, movement or musculoskeletal based, and mm -hmm. it's just you need to get stronger or you need to implement a training program, then they'll go see one of the trainers. Okay, cool. Um, there's probably about four of us who are on, you know, pretty much four trainers who are on pretty much full time. Yeah. And the rest are all part to casual. Okay, cool. So you've got how many, how many PTs do you have? Oh, so you just said that, but like how many, how many sessions, like PT sessions do you have a week on top of all your classes? For me or the I total? mean, just in general, yeah. Yeah. Um, mate, if you were to include everything we do, there'd probably be upwards of 120 sort of training sessions. Fucking hell. Um, but yeah. then, then again, a few of them are subcontractors as well. So we don't, okay, we don't, yeah. we don't see that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's more of a different okay. setup. That's pretty um, decent though. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we do, I think, 47 group fitness sessions a week. And that's yeah. kind of like a fixed timetable. Yeah. Wow. Which is, you know, this, I guess, how people know about us, if anything, it's, it's you get 20 people to a class, they're yeah. going to tell more people than one-on-one -on -one PT will. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. So you kind of like run off and like how many coaches do you have in on, on those two on the sessions? Like so two two coaches or? We have one coach per session and try to have one intern, one to two interns per session. Oh, wow, man. That's um, that's awesome. Okay. And like, so you obviously have an intern program running then. Yeah. So with Kieran doing his work at Edith Cowan, coming over, having a connection with UQ, um, we are lucky enough that the guy at QT and UQ have a relationship and they say, mm -hmm. you know, you can do your 12 week prac at Science Fitness for third and fourth years. Yeah. So Kieran's developed this really good relationship. They go, you know, we can accept, I think eight to 12 at a time and we might get eight to 12 per quarter coming over and doing, Damn. I think it's 120 hours a week, uh, in that period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty mad. So any, anyone hear that, you want to uh, want to go get a good, um, pretty much what do you call that? Internship? Hit pen and say Joe. Yeah. It's um it's pretty cool, man. Like you don't have to you do have to clean the toilets, but <laughs> if you can get past that, it's yeah. pretty good uh, pretty good ship. Man. Okay, so just uh, I guess for anyone anyone that like is listening to the podcast, like what do you what do you get in your internship? Like obviously I think you don't you don't have to pay for it obviously because no. it's an internship. Completely free. Yep, cool. So it's um we do accept people not coming through the university, but okay. just understand that there's a lot more that you have to actually get. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the university kind of require us to take on a certain amount per quarter. Okay, yeah, so just because of your actual relationship with them. Yeah. So obviously, so if you're, like, if you have relationships with them, does that mean you're getting funding from them as well? Or? Yeah. Okay. It's, um, there's no monetary swap whatsoever. Okay, it's but it's purely, yeah. like a name, like they're like, go and see these guys yeah. sort of thing. Okay. And as a result, we get two things out of it, I suppose, is A, we have to be better coaches to coach them. Yeah, which yeah, is, yeah. Which is huge. Like and, a real high caliber. Yeah, and, cool. Um, we also get to see, you know, potential people coming through and maybe putting them on. Yeah. So we've had a few people, um, Francesca, um, Roy Timms, Ash, who yeah. all come on through the university program yeah. to now become, you know, casual part-time workers. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that, that kind of gives you a little bit of, like you can actually pull from the... From well, the man, it weeds out. It weeds out. Weirdos, basically. Yeah. Like if, if <laughs> you know, yeah, people don't no, I gel get that. with everyone. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You might get someone who's a lot smarter than I am. Yeah. But they personality might. clash or, or yeah. whatever. Or... They definitely don't have the personal skills to uh, be able to actually hold a conversation. Yeah. More with just with like a client than anything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you can be the smartest guy in the world, but if, if they're off you, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, very true. That is, uh, I think that's a real big thing though as well at the moment. I think like Luke and I and like Zoe and I, we always talk about it, but it's like, you can see someone who's like really, really good with people, mm. but they'll be a shit fucking coach. Yeah. But I mean, like the smartest guy in the world is just never going to get any business if they can't actually talk to people. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. No, it's, um, initially I was a little bit hesitant with it because it's like, oh, you know, we have to spend X amount of hours training them up, blah, 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 blah. But it's, man, it's for something that's completely free on both sides. It's been unreal. Yeah, really, really good experience for us. Okay, cool. And hopefully... For them as well. Yeah, I'm sure it probably would be. So I guess, um, I don't think we actually went through it. So but like, how, how many weeks does it actually span? Uh, typically 12 to 16 weeks. Oh, wow. That's that's a long time. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of the guys, since it's hours based, they can kind of crunch it all. Okay, and then get it out of the way. Yeah. 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 Um, but what we've what we found generally is people do the, you know, 8 to 12 weeks or 12 to 16 weeks type thing. Mm -hmm. And they'll just go two shifts a week, yeah. three to five hours per shift. So you might start at five, leave at nine. 
pretty okay. pretty normal easy PD, normal yeah. shift yeah. yeah um especially if you want to be in this industry yeah you're not asking them to do anything they wouldn't be doing yeah um and then they can go on about their life and you know go work at a cafe or whatever the fuck they, yeah. else they do easy alrighty so I want to ask I know you're writing notes down as well so Joe's just uh Joe's doing his um ASCA level two at the moment so you've done all the practical weekends yep but you've been um, sitting on that for the last, uh, how long? Oh, man. <laughs> you? <Yeah. laughs> Mate, I'm going to call out my other friend, Michael Bray. I always do it to him as well. I had him on in like one of the first like pilot ones that we did. And I was like asking him questions. He just wouldn't answer it. Yeah. He just hasn't done it. He, oh, man. Did, he did it like two years ago. So, yeah. Like, talk us through Michael, that. Michael, come on. Michael Bray. You, you heard your name. I'm tag you. <laughs> um, so level two what does it entail because I actually really want to do it yep I think next year like it's um, I think just more having the insurance covered for actually doing like rehabilitation work and all yep. that sort of stuff so like what does the what does certificate actually give to you yep so it basically the reason I did it was I um through through my girlfriend Ash who plays for Oz and Touch okay she um, has a good relationship with the head coach and the head coach um, invited me down to do like a like a screening session almost with the girls. Um, and I was luckily, uh, I got accepted to do the, I guess, their training program leading into the World Cup. Oh, wow. Um, oh, so, that's pretty awesome. Fuck, talk us through that. We need to hear about so, that as well. So basically they we'll, had... We'll, we'll do that in a minute, yeah. Yeah, so basically um, they had this big prep and I wrote the programs. It was, you know, a little bit of in-person work, but they live all over Australia. Yeah, all so over yeah. the East Coast anyway. So cool. it was largely online based. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was reading up on it and for that, it would be highly recommended to have a ASCA level two. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wasn't really doing it for the certificate. I was more doing it so in case I'm going to touch football or likewise said, oh, hey, this guy's, yeah. you know, no, you need a degree. Yeah, yeah. an idiot. Who the fuck is he? Yeah. 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 Um, I could at least say, oh, no, I got a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I did that and, you know, it was a good weekend. It was four weekends of, of practical. It was it four weekends? Oh, uh, sorry, four days. Four two days, weekends. two weekends. I lied. Yeah, yeah. Um, How could you? Speed, change of direction, a little bit of ollie lifting, a little mm -hmm. bit of nutrition. Yeah. To be honest, nothing. Nothing. That you'd really, yeah. you know, write home about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you've got some cool drills and stuff, like, you know. Yeah. You go there and you're like, oh, this drill would be cool here and that drill would be cool there. But... That is what I've heard. It's not, like, groundbreaking. But, yeah. I mean, like, a lot of the stuff is it. Yeah. It just, oh, uh, we'll say, actually, because, like, I don't know, like, Luke's always, like, you know, you can't, or everyone always says that you can't reinvent the wheel, but, I mean, mm. it just depends on the way you look at it, right? Yeah. But, I mean... It's also like what I've found recently from from some courses is kind of like, you know, they're really good at like knowing the course, mm. but then they don't know much else about it. Yeah. Is that kind of what it felt like or? Well, just with the the workbook and I'm not trying to bag it by any means. It was like, you know, write your definition of strength and it's kind of like, or, you know, um, write a four week strength program for an in-season athlete. And it's kind of like, mate, if you're doing a level two, yeah. you can't do that. What you've the got fuck? something wrong with you. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting, isn't so, it? I understand that you gotta, <laughs> yeah. you gotta you gotta do your time and do all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's kinda like if you if you haven't been writing strength programs or you, yeah. you don't know how to write it, then what the fuck are you yeah. actually doing? Okay, so so it doesn't actually like cover like rehab and stuff like that, you know? Um it goes through for example, one of the questions I remember was if an athlete were to strain their hamstring, mm -hmm. you know, four weeks out or something like that, what changes would you make to a program mm -hmm. to try and I guess mitigate soreness or train around an injury or something like that yeah and then you could write maybe for example instead of doing high speed work you could do some more quad dominant work in the interim or some sled pushes yeah to kind of yeah offset Take that load. Stuff. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so um, it's like pretty pretty fucking novice shit yeah, yeah right. it's not really like you know what is exercise one to rehab the hamstring yeah okay yeah. all right mm. okay it's yeah it's um you know, I understand this. you got to do what you got to do. But... Yeah. So, uh, I've heard I've heard it's a bit of a cunt to do, though. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, Man. like, just took you a long time, right? Man, so I did the uh, I did the workbook and the practical <laughs> pretty fast. Yeah. Um, but there's this, there's this journal that you have to write at the end for the Journal of Strength and Conditioning. And you have a few options. You can uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can kind of go over the research. You can do your own study. You can write a, a an article or an essay mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. And coming back to my... Being shit at school, yeah. Being shit at sitting down and writing stuff. It's yeah. just taken me a year. Like, yeah. what's it now? September. A year and two months. A year and two months. Like, it's just a fucking pain in the ass. 
But I'm starting. They, they don't like it, fucking expect like you know like a massive like ten thousand page thesis. Today. Yeah. What what I mean like what do they expect realistically like? Um. Because I mean I've read some of the articles and like they're it's just like reviews of like fucking like there was one on there that was like a review of gridiron yeah. and strength training. I'm like yeah. that's okay. Like, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like you know, I try and if I was gonna write something, I want it to be of a high standard because I'm putting my name on it and I yeah, don't know how many people are going to read it. You'll probably get me and my mum reading yeah. it to be honest. <laughs> I'll read it, mate. Uh, three you of let us. me know. You three of us. Yeah. <laughs> you let me know. Um, I'll read it. But you know, you don't want to put something out there that's absolute crap. Like dog shit. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But I think that comes from your pride in your work too, obviously. Mm. That reflects in your business as mm. well. So, But um, yeah, so I've decided to go with a, a article. Okay. I'm going with the subjective landing, like the way to determine subjective landing progressions mm-hmm. for field sport athletes. Okay. So I was looking around, there's a lot of objective stuff that you can look at. Yep. Um, but I think from a subjective point of view, so let's say a level 1A exercise would be uh, standing on your toes, dropping down into like a, a drop down position, like an athletic position. Yep. As if you were just going to go from two legs to two legs and freeze. Okay, cool. That would be like probably entry. Yep. And then from there, you go maybe like a box drop down. So you're standing on a 30 centimeter box. And then land on two, yeah. catch it, and yeah. then so on and so forth. Cool. So having that subjective pathway to go from A1 to A2, or from, you know, going sagittal plane to transverse plane, or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it may be. Okay, so, so like all those progressions. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I guess um, <clears throat> for the for the people who don't really know what objective and subjective is, can yeah. you describe that? So objective would be like, for example, if you had a centimeter score so let's say you jumped um one meter and you had to jump 150 150 centimeters to pass the score yep that'd be an objective way of saying yes or no okay so it's measurable is that almost yeah yeah cool. measurable so um and there's no sort of personal bias to it it's it's mm. black or white yeah yeah sweet um subjective would be like i'm looking at you and i'm thinking this is pretty shit <laughs> yeah and it's it, okay. And it is pretty shit, and okay. it's, it might be things like if you're doing a landing and your knee is doing a valgus yeah, position, pattern. yeah, um, and you're like, okay, well, I understand that you might be a bit tired, but the knee is coming towards the end line, whereas yeah. the hip and foot are staying the same. Okay, it looks like a triangle, but it should be okay. a straight line. So it's pretty much like personal versus what what is actually seen. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I guess when you like when you're looking at all like the subjective stuff, then it's it's. Obviously, you're going to take like an eye for technique as well, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I think with that, it's obviously training the coach and having those sort of progression models in place. It could also be things like if you were to freeze frame and look at the look at the camera, which kind of has a bit of a blend between two. Yeah. If you drew a straight line from hip, ankle, knee, yeah, you okay. could almost say, look, I understand that could be a little bit towards both ends of the spectrum. Okay. But it's probably more subjective. That's it. Yeah, so that's really interesting because I always see, I think that's one big thing people see. They're always like looking at, I think it's Coach's Eyes, that app that mm. you can like take a video on your iPad or whatever and then people will put like a fancy little line and yeah. fucking whatever. Yeah. Like, what does that mean for anyone? So, well, it kind of looks at torso slash hip slash knee angle. So, in a landing, generally you want to have a vertical shin. Okay. Generally, you want to have your shoulders coming forward a little bit. So, you're kind of more in like a, a blend of a hinge slash squat position. So I would okay. say like a trap bar setup. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a little bit more of an RDL bias. Okay, so like, yeah, I think that just gives everyone like a little bit better like idea, especially if they're like visual learners. Yeah. yeah. So if you think of setting up with a trap bar and being a tiny bit more hinge dominant, mm-hmm. that's what I would consider a pretty good landing posture with two feet. Okay, cool. Um, whereas if you are more of a, you know, a single leg squat to box where you've got more of an upright torso, yep. your weight is so far behind you that it's very, very hard to accelerate yep. because you're going from heel back to toe, then accelerating, and by mm. then the play's already gone okay. and you're two steps behind. Very cool. All right, I just want to pull you up on what you just said there. So, squat to box. That's uh, that's one big thing that we like to hear. What? So, you obviously know the difference between a squat to box and a box squat. Yep. Love it. What is it? I would. Cons- I was talking about the single leg. Oh, okay, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I would consider a squat to box like... Am I talking barbell? Uh, no, nah, just even even just with dumbbells for like someone who doesn't know or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I would personally consider a squat to box. Let's say we're doing a goblet position. Yeah, yeah. You go down, you're in a goblet position, you yeah. tap the box, and you stand back up. Cool. Whereas I would consider a box squat, you go down and it might be like a more forward angle, you pause. And yeah, you awesome. Yeah, cool. That's uh, that's one big thing. Like Luke, Luke's real big on like obviously all that sort of stuff. It's very interesting to see, but like 
I think like the semantics of it like really matter because mm. I think um, when you're looking at like what a squat to box actually is, like most people will call that a box squat mm. when people are just like, you know, like sitting down on their ass, like actually like fully relaxing and then standing back up. Yeah. 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 So it was, just, it was just interesting to yeah. see what it um, but if you think of, let's say you're doing a, a single leg sit back on the box yeah. type situation. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. Think a very novice, like learning to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your weight will transfer so far to your heel and Obviously. then back to your toe and it's like, oh, man, just, just yeah. stay forward. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty cool. All right, uh, so I guess I really want to hear about like all the different progressions so people can actually get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, in my, in my subjective head of mind, what I kind of take people through from a field-based perspective is yep. you do your double leg drop down. So okay. imagine standing on your toes, um, hands above your head, and then as soon as you make a cue, so it might be a clap or it might be go or it might be just go on your own time, yep. you go from that tall position down to that RDL trap bar deadlift, deadlift, deadlift position, sort of thing, yeah. and you just kind of freeze. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. If you were to imagine your hands in front of your sternum ready to catch a soccer ball or something, that's yep. your sort of final position. Okay. From there, I would then go to a 30 centimeter box. Yep. I would hover one leg off the ground, drop okay. down, land in the exact same position. Yep. And then you could progress this by either bringing the box height up or turning it into kind of like a broad jump where you're going forward. Okay. Starting cool. with a small base and slowly jumping further and further. Okay. So it's almost, I guess, for, for like the listeners, it's almost just like, um, like, your your pretty much pro or uh, regressions of like starting plyos is that what you would forget uh, yeah. call this as or? Yeah, yeah yeah okay so you know you're taking out obviously the elasticity and you're just doing the absorption part okay cool um and then you know from there what i would consider is if you've gone from a really controlled environment where you're telling the person this is exactly what you're going to do this mm -hmm. is how long you're going to land for and this is the end scenario it's very safe, it's very controlled, there's no sort of dynamic movement to it. Mm -hmm. Then if you were to take that, you know, a couple of steps down the track and you go, look, on the clapped reaction, mm -hmm. I want you to land, that would be another progression. Ah, okay, so you're adding like, or like a neuromuscular control sort of Yeah, thing so it might be an audible, well. it might be, you know, catch the soccer ball, okay. aesthetic, it might be, um, uh, you might point your hands, it might be visual. Okay, cool. Those sort of things. Yeah, very, very cool. Okay, so I guess what's, what's next after that? Okay, so I normally like going controlled and staying controlled for a little bit. So yeah, I'd cool. go from double to single. Yep. So then I'd do the exact same series with single. So think okay, cool, standing cool. on one leg, above your head, drop down, yep. off a box or going forward. Okay, cool. And then once they've nailed that, then I would consider doing some sort of change of direction. Okay, sweet. And usually what I would do is kind of like a lateral hop. So imagine you're facing a certain way. You yep. jump and then you move your body 30 centimeters to your right and okay. land in the same facing position. Oh, okay. Yep. So it's, you haven't... It's like changed. almost like an L, just like an L straight across. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. So you haven't necessarily changed directions, but you move laterally. Okay, cool. And then you could do that with the lateral leg first. So if you're on your right leg jumping with your right, so right to right. Yep. And then you would progress that to right to left or something. And then yeah. you go from left to left going okay. to the medial side. Very cool. Very and cool. then my last one would be more of that rotational element where you're jumping, you then spin 90 degrees and then land. Okay, cool. So then you've got your doubles, your singles, your controlled environment, your yeah. audible, kinesthetic, visual cues, and you can kind of just go on. Yeah, fuck. So you can just keep on adding adding the complexity. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, most people, once they get to a single with an element, a lateral element, a rotational, then they're pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, cool. And then it's just kind of the fun that you have with programming and how you can make those changes. Yeah, okay, cool. But you want to get people past that double leg scenario pretty quickly. Right. Okay, I guess um, for like, what is what is this mainly for? I guess like it's like the regressions of like some, some actual like landing and like plyos. Mm. But like, what are, you, what are you sort of looking for when you're actually like, when you like doing all those progressions? Yeah, okay. So probably in the more... Um, wholesome sense i'm looking for the ability to absorb force okay and what is what is i guess what does that sort of look like for you um the ability to put the brakes on from a from a moving fast to slow situation so okay. we think of things like power cleans and box jumps um they're very concentric in nature yep whereas obviously with the weight training we build up a, a bit more of an eccentric profile so we want to be able to take that into a sporting situation so think of if you're running and you have to chase and change the direction. Yeah. You run fast, you slow down, and then you accelerate again. Okay. So it's just kind of teaching that pattern in a controlled environment. Yeah, so it's yeah. not always just fast, fast, fast. Okay. And while I have no sort of evidence on it on me, yeah. you subjectively can see the yeah, difference. Yeah, it's like empirical. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, if a girl can go 
a girl particularly because they might be more untrained or a little bit weaker mm-hmm. um, from a single leg squat and then apply that same, I guess, eccentric landing component and their knee and their hip and their toe line up really well. Yeah. You're like, she might be having that strength adaption that we're looking for yep. in her glutes, in mm-hmm. her hamstrings, okay. and that might mitigate her chances of injury. Okay, cool. All right, so um, I guess like on he- uh, hip, foot, knee, and then hip, what um, I guess people know like a, a base idea of like what goes on there, but I mean like when you when you look at that whole sort of triad, like what, what are you sort of looking for most? Like what, yep. what do you usually find affects more? So like would you go hip, Foot affects knee, which affects hip, or hip, or vice versa, or, um, or would it really just depend? I think it would depend. Um, obviously, if all things line up and the foot is completely straight, yep. then I would maybe suggest that it could be an arch in the foot, mm-hmm. maybe it could be a glute, yep. maybe it could be a tight adductor, not quite sure. Yeah. Um, obviously, if there's a bit of external rotation to the foot, yep. it would change the question completely cool um but i would say that the hip and the foot would have a direct correlation with where the knee goes yeah cool so i guess um that'll, that'll take us to like that do you do you consciously cue people to push their knees out when they're squatting or do you kind of just let the um, knees go where they where they want i i mean i, I think yeah. the biggest thing is is like i know there's a lot of people who train to smash the knees out yeah but at the same time like i also know like from my experience like if you push your knees out too hard, you also might get a bit of inhibition. Mm. Um, whether it be from like the extension fibers of the glute, mm. max, or maybe even the adductors, like mm. who knows. But I mean, I've always been under the premise that you fix the foot or the hip and the mm. knee will go with it. Yep. I mean, do you sort of believe in that? Or? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, from a landing posture, you're always in, you should always strive to be in a double leg, foot completely straight knee kind of straight position yep. rather than cueing knees out, knees in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to understand that, as you know, it doesn't work with squatting, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. you have to change your toe position to a degree and blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I think what you strive for in a landing and a squat is completely different. Okay, cool. But I think as well that you should have an element of trying to spread the floor or to push the band apart or to okay. essentially open up the knees. Open up the knees at some point, get yeah. that sort of abduction. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Alrighty, that's uh, that's pretty good. So I guess take us back to like you writing that program, that uh for for the team for the team. What does yeah. that so, look like? Um, it was a big prep. So we did the initial screening in April, um, two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Okay. So ages ago. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, well, April twenty eighteen. Yeah. Um, we went in, or well, I went in rather, and we just did a very general screening. So things like a just a body weight squat. How did it look? Yeah. It was in a it was at a park. It was in a team environment. And oh I had yeah, yeah. Ten minutes with two people at a time, so it was kind of like really punch through. Bang, bang, bang. But I mean, like when you think about it as well, like you're never really gonna until you like get to like fucking exos level or something. Mm-hmm. You're never really gonna actually have like the you know hmm. the hour with someone. I mean, you can do that with PT and shit and stuff, I believe. But it's like in a team environment, there's no time, so you yeah. just got to get what you can done. Yeah, and you know, I went there with kind of two goals. One was to create a, a good buy-in with mm-hmm. everyone, and was two to be able to say to the coach that this actually works. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was the first time they've done any sort of strength and conditioning stuff. Yeah, so that'll be a massive thing for you, right? Being able to actually like tell. Or like show the coach that it's actually going to work, mm. so he has some buy-in too. Because mm. I mean, I think a lot of like, well, it's like a lot of the old coaching styles, right? They never really had strength and conditioning. No. So and I mean, like, but I think that's obviously taken everything leaps and bounds too. Yeah. But yeah. So I went in and did like a squat, a lunge, a side plank, a glute bridge, clam, kind yep. of check a little bit of inhibition and stuff like that. Um, nothing too major. And then the big one that I went through, which was again more probably a little bit of objective, a little bit subjective. I did a single leg hop. Okay, cool. A lateral hop, just to kind of suss out. I gave him a rating out of five. Five being perfect, one being shit. Yep. And what, I guess, what was the mean? The mean? High twos. <laughs> okay, so what did a high two look like to you? So, obviously, um, it's a massive internal rotation. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, they, they stick it for all of 0.01 seconds. And then <laughs> a little bit of shake goes oh, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I can and see then <laughs> I think the big kind of selling point, which got everyone a little bit more excited, is we tested the broad jump. So oh, yeah. So, I brought so, out a big... Uh, Big tape measure, the girls sort of line, jump as far as they can. Um, I think at the time the winning female jump was 240. That's actually pretty decent. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's um, um that's some power right yeah. there. And then it was Danny Davis, very wow. powerful, 
powerful chick. Yeah, was she, um, uh, what sort of body type was she, like mezzo uh, or? She's very lean, she's probably like 5'11". Okay, so she's pretty jacked as well then. Or? Yeah, no, she's not like, she's not a big chick, she's just very, you know, just, athletic, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of like a, like a hurdler slash high jumper sort of. Physique. Physique sort of thing. Cool, yeah. So she obviously has that uh, explosiveness about yeah. her. Yeah, cool. And um, and then fast forward to our, our program at the end, I think the winning jump was like 272 or something. Damn! So it was like a 30-something. I can't do maths, but yeah. big improvement. <laughs> Mate, I was never good at maths either, so yeah. don't worry. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. there, was, uh, there was some good That's improvements huge across improvements. the board. And that, that would be so important for that coach to be like, holy fuck, this shit actually works. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he... he very openly, he's a really good guy. He said to me, "You know, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I trust yeah, you. Yeah, um, just show me. You gotta show you got. me it works." And I said to him at the end, "Blah blah blah." And you know, you can't really take credit for their their win because the girls yeah. were just unbelievable. But the World Cup, they just they just smashed, smashed it. Smashed it. Like no one even came close. Fuck yeah! Second mate. place, I think, came within you know seven tries or something, which in touches, you know, fuck a blowout. Yeah, that's huge. That is fucking huge. So. Well done to you, sir. Yeah, no, I was credit to the girls. Like, yeah, yeah. Did really well. So. <laughs> yeah, that's like a what are those? It's like NRL players. Well, credit to boys. Yeah, credit to the boys. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, I just want to thank uh, the boys and uh, all my uh, hard work this week. We are uh, just. What do we do? We just uh, executed the game plan and just want to thank the boys. Yeah, so, yeah. A couple of pokey sessions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Couple too soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. So that was that's that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, okay, right, so. I want to know, like, what do you do on the weekends? Man, um, so I love playing TRL, which is like a hybrid between touch and rugby league. Essentially, it's touch, touch rugby league. Um, okay, so do you have to, like, plant the ball? Or? Yeah, so you plant the ball, put, uh, roll it with your foot, that kind of rugby league thing. But oh, it's also okay. Just touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you, so it's uh, actual touch, it's not like... Um, not tag, no. Not tag, okay. Not touch. Cool. And, tag, um, okay. We've been playing with this group of mates from school who we played with for since we were probably 16 or so. We've okay. Played, you know, four times, it's like quarterly seasons. Like yeah, yeah, Four yeah. times a year. Okay, that, sounds, since. that so sounds pretty mad. It's a good way for all the boys to catch up with each other at mm-hmm. least once a week and, and hang out. Um, Saturdays, mate, normally I just rip into a bit of work till about two. Yeah. And then go to my missus' place, we lie by the pool sometimes. And then yeah. Sunday, depends, you know, we might go coffee, might do a bit of work. Yeah. I normally do like a 20 to 30 minute little session on Sunday. Oh, okay. So just like a, a hit, like hit and rip sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, two to three lifts and a little bit of cardio just to get moving. And then, yeah. Um, we've been really recently Sunday hours, normally Netflix hours. So we just Fuck yeah. lie on the couch and watch Mindhunter at the moment. Okay, cool. I, I haven't even heard of that. What is it? Man, it's about these guys who basically came up with the term serial killer back in the, I think it was the 60s or 70s. Okay. And basically they try and find out the behavior of serial killers and sickos before it occurs. Yeah. So like think of Manson. Yeah, right? yeah, and they're yeah. trying to figure out why he was so fucked up. So is it, act- is it a doco or is it an act- No, but it's based on a true series. Okay. So the guy who directed it, I'm pretty sure his name's David Fincher and he okay. did like Fight Club and Gone Girl. So he likes all those yeah, sort of, yeah, 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 those yeah. twists. Yeah. Um, and it's just this cool series about how and why sickos become sickos. That's actually pretty mad. Have you watched the uh, the most recent um, fuck the Brad Pitt movie, Guy, um, Guy Ritchie movie? Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. That fucked with my head because I didn't know I didn't know that that was like the whole Marilyn Manson thing behind that. Yeah. But it's like I went in there and like I was just like fuck this is such a shit movie. Yeah. It just took so it took it was like three hours, yeah, man. I yeah. was just like, what the fuck is going on? And then we finally get to the part where apparently he's supposed to kill the other dudes instead, but like. Brad Pitt kills him and I was just like, well, this is fucking retarded. How about that pool scene? I mean, I was just like... Fuck, oh, how good was that pool scene? I didn't even think it was that funny, man. Like, Luke was sitting next to me, like, pissing himself laughing because he knew what was happening and I was just like, this is just fucked. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not, like, a massive gore fan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was just yeah. kind of like, all right, yeah. sweet. But yeah, th- I think that's, like, that's the Marilyn Manson thing, right? Yeah. Because he, like, employed, pe- like, kids or something? Or? Yeah, so he basically drugged him and said, you know, I'm I'm God, do whatever I say, type stuff. And Damn. they sort of saw him as a godlike figure and did anything he said. Yeah. Plus the LSD and anything else they were on. And yeah, I was going to say, that would have to be pretty fucking high yeah. to do that sort of shit. And then, as a result, just killed all these people. That's fucked, isn't it? Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> But no, there's, there's some stuff on like, you know, why sex offenders become sex offenders and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, yeah. it's kind of, uh, it references actual, actual um, serial killers. 
Oh, um, and, okay. fun, and you know, weirdly enough, not funnily enough, weirdly enough, they actually kind of look like the actual person. So they've chosen characters who look like they're actual serial killers. Mm. So you draw a reference at the end and you're like, ah. They're actually right. really, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. So if you're into that kind of stuff, it's pretty cool. I'm like, I always get fucking, I don't know, it's not like a massive TV fest. But it's kind of like, you have Sundays to watch it, right? Yeah. I mean, do you watch it any other day? Because I never do. No, no, no. No, no who the fuck has an actual time? No, nah, you go to bed. I, like, I get home at you know, 8.30 most nights and I, fuck. I'm fucked. I yeah. just you know, hit the bed, <laughs> lights out, go again. Yeah, okay. Do you live with your missus? Uh, no, nah, so I still live at home um, and so does she, but we kind of alternate between houses. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I live pretty close to the gym, but she lives in Wolf Wolf, so. Okay. What, actual Wolf Wolf? Or? Uh, it's about 45 minutes from the gym. Oh, so. damn, son. Okay. That's you get up in the cool. cricket to like, not even wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, being 45 minutes away, that'd mean what, you have to wake up at like four as well to get there? Or? Yeah, it's like four or five is my alarm. If I go past four or five, I'm like, fuck, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fuck. Oh, mate, I'll tell you what. One thing moved me up here. I've not missed the real early mornings. So. Yeah. I mean, it's just like a, it's, uh, everyone used to laugh at me because I used to nap so much. Yeah. But I mean, it's like, do you nap at all? Or? No, I can't do it. You can't nap? No, I can't do it. Oh, man, I feel sorry for you. I feel like if I nap, I just, you know, wake up and I'm like, who am I? Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what, what have I done? You know? Yeah, that's so funny because everyone who's like a rookie napper <laughs> always does that. You just kind of like, yeah. you got to set the alarm, man. Otherwise, you just fucking... Yeah, <laughs> you're one of the, our massage... <laughs> Therapist, um, he's a he does Iron Man. You know, that's his thing. Like he's a shit, really. Yeah, his name's Mitch Baker. Okay, absolute weapon on the on the run and the bike and the swim and stuff. Fuck, that's, um, that's but really I'm always gnarly. calling him, being like, mate, you know, what are you doing? And then he doesn't call you up five times. Yeah. Like, oh, sorry, I was napping. <laughs> <laughs> and you obviously just you know doing two hours on the bike or three hours yeah. on the bike and then running. You like yes. Rooted. Yeah, that is a that is a long time. It's kind of it. comparable to PT in a way. <laughs> yeah, actually though, actually because it's like I mean. I know if, like, the first, like, six months of, like, my PT career, mm. you just, like, you go, you'd be talking to people, like, not even that much. Mm. You wouldn't have that many clients, but it's still, like, you get home, you just fuck. Yeah. I remember my girlfriend at the time, she was just, like, you're not talking to me. I'm, like, I just don't want to talk to anyone. Because mm. you just, like, gives people so much energy, hey. Mm. Like, I think, what's what's the biggest thing I hear in the gym? It's, like, everyone wants to become a personal trainer, and then mm. they realize what it actually takes. And yeah. they're, like... Yeah, it's true, man. It's like it's not exactly a hard job, in term. I I think anyway, in terms of you know, building a client base. No, or, no. Or on the tools as such, like yeah. you never compare to your. I got mates with chippies and stuff. You can yeah, never yeah. Compare to them. That's like, like real physical. It's all physical. Yeah. Um, but just like a hairdresser would be, if you're talking to 10, 12 people a day minimum. Yeah. You're like, man, I'm I'm pretty spent. Yeah. Just from like giving every single minute. To yeah. Per minute. And even if you don't have someone. For an hour, twelve times, you still talk to people who come to the gym. Yeah, you try and be as nice as possible. You're never going to be an absolute dick. And that's the thing, right? It all comes back to you actually being able to chat to people too. Mm. I mean, like, how many people do you talk to a day? Man, we are uh, we have a our program kind of sees you know twenty people an hour minimum of the group group stuff. Plus, yeah. I see my one on one, so yeah, fifty at least. You know, that's a lot of people. How many how many sessions do you have a week? Sorry, like personal training ones. Um, I do about thirty. Uh, hours and then I do five group classes every week. Okay. Um, and then I just kind of float in the gym after that and just just talk shit basically. So yeah, a lot of the guys that I've trained for a while are you know quite competent with the way I program. So mm. you, know, I, you don't have to necessarily see me one on one. They might just come in. Yeah, I like, might see them once every four weeks. Yeah, for yeah, a, a yeah, check yeah. up No, nah, that that's that's pretty cool. Like when you actually get that competency of people. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Like, some guys, a lot of my guys aren't there to be the strongest people ever. Like, they're not powerlifters, they're not bodybuilders. They just want to be slightly stronger, yeah. slightly more fit for yeah. their sport. Yeah, like, you don't want to be fucking fat, but, like, you yeah. also, like, you just want to look okay and, like, yeah. you know. It's more, I mean, I think living up here as well, one thing I've noticed is, like, everyone looks good all the time. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you know, I went from, like, living in Canberra where it's, like, a cold shithole for <laughs> half, half of the year. I don't know how you do it. I mean... Wearing a jumper right now. Uh, <laughs> 27 degrees. <laughs> yeah, this cut is wearing a jumper. I'm here, like, boiling. Like, 
I mean, <laughs> I'll check the weather. I'll check the actual degrees. Yeah, well, I mean, like, so, for my point B, it's like, you know, you fucking, you covered up for like half of the year. And no wonder I'm so fucking white still. Yeah. It's just you like. to the beach, bro. Yeah. 24. 24 the official degrees. And he's wearing like a jumper and, he's got a jumper and like, uh, what do you call those, those shorts? Like footy shorts? Yeah. Or, or are they more like um, like stubbies? Yeah. Little shout out to Little Lemon. <laughs> They're comfy clothes, eh? Yeah. I don't have any, but I need to get me some. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But it's like. Everyone looks looks after themselves up here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's um like obviously we're not at the beach. Yeah, but it's it's reasonably close enough to the beach. Very close. And um, a lot of the guys who come to our classes, obviously, being that sort of higher fitness, being at the one I work at predominantly. Yeah, yeah. Everyone wants to come three, four times a week minimum. Everyone wants to smash it, which is good to see. Yeah. And so you walk in, you're like, yeah, these people are fit. Yeah. Okay. It's cool, eh? It's very cool. Yeah, a lot of people just take a lot more care of themselves because they're actually like out in public and showing skin and shit like that. It's good to see, you know. Oh, it's awesome to see, mate! I love it. Yeah, direction for the the way to work. I do, I do love Brisbane because there's just like so, like there's a lot of parks and like rec land in Canberra, but like Mm. everyone is out doing shit outside, Mm. and it's just I think it's all I think like the government actually pushes it up here, Mm. don't they? Like. Mm. Like, they actually want people outside and shit like yeah. that, whereas... Well, there's a lot of markets and stuff that, like, right across from our gym, there's the West End Markets, and you know, okay. that's packed every Saturday. Oh, West End Markets? Yeah. Is so, that, like, groceries and stuff? Yeah, or? it's groceries. I think they sell a bit of, like, you know, cheap crap furniture and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably fruit and veg, and, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of people there every weekend might getting have to, outside. Damn, I might have to come down, because I go to the, I think it's Rockley Markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're pretty mad, too. Like, yeah. fuck... It's actually crazy how much cheaper that is too. It's like you go and I get like two full bags. Like you get, I get like a kilo of bananas, you know, like four punnets of blueberries, like five fucking punnets of strawberries. And then you fill your bag with greens. It's like 35 bucks. Yeah, it's cheap as. When is you like, you go to Woolies and you like buy like, you know, like a stir fry packet mm. that's like fucking shit. Mm. And it's like five bucks. Yeah. One avocado, eight bucks. Yeah, literally, literally. Do you get like, are you like a big fan of like organic food or? To be honest, it's... Doesn't really doesn't take influence advantage. my yeah, yeah doesn't really influence my week that much yeah so, okay yeah um, what about you I mean yeah yeah like I, I do like to get out to the markets so I think it's one big thing I did like it I think it was like my um, New Year's resolution last year was just to go to the markets yeah I mean I like I think I just like funding the farmers mm. more than anything just like I don't know I, I I know it's not organic but I mean it's just like I just like getting outside as well like yeah people just seem so much more happy. Oh man! At the markets, whereas like when you go to Woolies, like everyone's a cunt and in a rush. Yeah. And it's like, Fuck! Get out of my face. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's I don't know that much research on it. You probably tell me more, but like with the whole sunlight vitamin D thing, like the other day I was feeling a bit. I don't know. I was in the gym all day and then yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just kind of like in that. It's not aircon, but that darker sort of environment. I went outside for thirty minutes. I just sat there and listened to a podcast. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel so much better. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, um, I'm not, I'm not up on all the research on the vitamins. We could probably talk to you about that. But I know, like, whenever I feel like even just a little bit off, mm. I'll just go sit in the sun for like half hour, and I feel so much better. It's like the coffee shot. This is this re-energizer. Literally, literally. Oh, coffee. I know, I know what your order is, but yeah. tell everyone else. May I get a piccolo? Woo! Short and sweet. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah. How how the lie? Probably what six nine, six no, nine. five nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> Round it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm eight foot man. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two tall. Nah, I don't know. Five nine. Five nine. Yeah, I tell everyone five ten. <laughs> it's like my dad. Good old shout out. I'm like, how tall are you, dad? He's like five eleven. I'm like, you're five ten, mate. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. No. Whatever. I think I'm one seventy eight. One seventy eight. Whatever okay. that is. Yeah, yeah. I always get confused because I'm like, I think I'm one seventy eight, but I'm definitely, definitely a little bit taller. Yeah, definitely seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got a you got a fair pair of juicy quads on ya. Yeah? Mm. What's your what's your best squatty? Um, squat bench dead. Fuck. Ever ever my yeah. best For squat. Ever 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 ever. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> yeah. My best ever squat um, is one eighty. At oh wait eighty two eighty one eighty two. Not um, bad, my friend. My bench is fucking shit. Best I ever did was coming a year out of school was one oh five. One oh five. Okay. One. And my best ever dead was two oh five. So obviously lower body heavy. Yeah. Not upper body heavy. Mate, that's uh. Um, but I don't do a lot of heavy stuff at the moment. You don't. What yeah. do you? What's what's training like for you at the mo? Um, man, I box once a week. I do jits. Try and do it twice a week. Ooh, um, jits. Yeah. I run once a week, and then I'd probably do gym two to three times a week. So a little bit of a mix. So you're fairly active. Fairly yeah. Active. Um, I don't know. I find that I really enjoy other people 
telling me what to do, like boxing, like jits. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Running's not really like that, but um, I like being coached by yeah. other people. Yeah, yeah. So that when, like, I get my program done by one of our staff members, I like following that. Whereas yeah. writing my own program, I just feel like it's a bit of a chore. Yeah, I, I get that too. Because, like, Shane does my programs and I'm just, like, way happier. Because it's, like, to a certain point, you know what you what you want to do, mm. but you're not necessarily going to give yourself what you need to do. Mm. And you're always just going to, like, chop and change and shit like mm. that. So it's always good to actually, like, you know, have a coach, even to have a, a coach to have a coach. And then, yeah, you just don't have to fucking think about it. It's yeah. just one less thing off your plate, right? Yeah. yeah. And, like, I like I like the feeling, personally, of feeling fit. Like, I don't want to feel like a, you know... Jackass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going in to be like, yeah, man, I can run, you know, marathons every week sort of thing. And I'm not yeah, going yeah. to be like a powerlifter. Yeah. But I like that sort of hybrid where if someone were to say, can you do this, I'd like to say yes. Yeah. No, I, I really get that, man. I fucking... Tell you what, though. How, how, do, how do your hips go when you run? Um, mate, it's my calves if I do anything. Like, I, oh, I, run, really? I run pretty, I'm not bad at running, but, okay. um, what's your, what's your, do you do five or 10 K or, uh, I typically do interval work, like, you know, 30 to a minute on okay. one minutes, two minute off yep. type stuff where I'll do like, you know, short, sharp, like 20, 40, 60, those sort of things. Mm-hmm. Um, two years ago I did a marathon just for the sake of ticking the box and that Jesus. was pretty cool. Yeah. That was actually a really interesting sort of moment. My yeah. life because we were moving gyms at the time and it was very, very stressful. But because of all the aerobic work kicking in, I feel like that really offset the amount of stress that I was having. Oh, well, that's interesting, um, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, while I was the weakest I've probably ever been, like yeah. I remember a couple of weeks before the marathon, I put 60 kilo on the bar to squat and did like eight reps. And I was like, man, that's like, <laughs> that's like going to crush me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You probably would have weighed 60 at the probably, time. Yeah, probably, yeah, probably. There's not much to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think that if I had just relied on my weights and didn't do as much aerobic work, oh, I would yeah. have been a completely different human. Oh, yeah. You would have been like a fucking, like, I like I know how you feel. Yeah. It's just like when, when times get stressful, a lot of people just tend to outrule, yeah, aerobic training as like a, as a device to actually like calm you down. Mm. It's a good aerobic base is the way to go, mate. And that's it. You can't do a marathon without an aerobic base. <laughs> it's pretty cool though. I mean, um, like, do you know, shout out to Leo Daniel? I don't. So he's, he's like one of the breeding experts, but um, over in, over in Ireland, I think he works for ISI, yep. Irish Strength Institute. But um, I think Luke always tells us about like the time he did a, um, the time he did a marathon with no... I think it was like no prep apart from breathing work. So, and he literally breathed through his nose the entire time. True. Yeah. Wow. How fucking hectic is that? Wow. Just like diaphragmatic breathing. Yeah. Yeah. No sort of. Any any nasal breathing. No, I'm pretty sure I just did breathing work the entire lead up, and Man. then and then did a fucking nasal breathing. The whole race. Pretty sure. Man, that's crazy. Hectic, isn't it? That's like. <laughs> You know, like extraordinary I'm, people doing extraordinary things. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm not a bad runner. I'm not a great runner. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, can hold myself. Yeah. Sort of well. Um, but after that marathon, I was lying next to that Gatorade bucket. I, was, <laughs> I reckon I, I actually reckon I had. I mean, you know, those little cups of Gatorade. Yeah, get, yeah, I, yeah. I reckon I had fifty cups of Gatorade. <laughs> like it just went like, one, two, three. Like it just kept going. There's no amount of that is sugar. <laughs> would hydrate me. <laughs> it's funny because one of my friends put himself in a hole that bad. Oh, we were trying to get that. He was in the IV thing mate, next to him. It, <laughs> and like, I was waiting for him to finish up, and I was just sitting there just punching games <laughs> until I was good to go. Was were like, you? Um, did you do any carb loading or anything before? Or uh, we not like not proper. We had like oh. a big meal but two nights before. Like, oh, okay, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I remember that Arvo, if anyone has ever done a marathon, I went to, we went back, we sat in the beach for like, it was in Hawaii, we were in the beach for like maybe an hour or two, yeah. went back, had a shower, went to the pub at like three, yeah. we had a burger, two beers, and then at 3.30, all of us <laughs> passed out. Yeah, yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah. I wake was... up the next day. <laughs> Little lying there. <nest. laughs> mate, my, um, one of my best mates, oh, he's like my best mate, he's a fucking dickhead, like, he just says... No concept of nutrition, and like it's just I see it so often now. Like he did a run with one of his good mates. It was like a hundred k run over oh, three yeah, days. Ultras, yeah, yeah. Dude, he was like he didn't have like any carb load. He didn't really like eat that much during, mm. and then afterwards he was like, "Yeah, I was sort of like a week and a half afterwards," and I was just like, 
Mate, did you take like any carbs? He was like, oh, yeah, I smashed like a two litre of like chalky milk, but that was about it. But I was just like, mate, like it's just, yeah, right. you know, just when you hear that cringeworthy shit, you're mate, like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's such a funny dude, but it's just like, he's um he's recently turned into an F45 champ. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 But like this is this is coming from a guy that like we used to smash the gym like when we were at school, and we'd um just you know like go go pretty much like every morning before school and like he was like you know I'm always gonna do bench and like always this shit and now he's like turned into this um into this F45 guy you know I'm just like cardio buddy you've uh you've changed bro the king of 45 on 15 off (laughs) (laughs) yes yes pretty. Nah, you do their own. I have no bias. Yeah, no, no. Like it's you gotta do what works for you. You do have to do what works for you. I mean, fucking hell. It's um it is what it is. <laughs> he's your mate, but <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's my mate. He's no one else's. He's like Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. Okay. Um alright, so we've heard about that. So you obviously what teams do you follow in forty? Mate, I uh, I love rugby league. I support the Manly Seagulls, so hopefully oh. you know, I'm, from, uh, I'm from down that way where I was born. So oh. one step further than the Broncos, but obviously not where the Raiders. I don't know, you're a Raiders guy? No, nah, mate. Have I mean, a guess. Are you from Canberra? Yeah, I don't fucking follow the Raiders. Though. Mate, There's no shit. To follow. Uh, I reckon you would follow, I reckon the Dogs. Oh, come on, mate. Fuck off. I don't know who. Go on. Uh... The exact opposite of the dogs. Dragons? Closer. Eels? No. Nah. Sharks? No, nah, I think more this side of the of Sydney. Newcastle? Fuck, I'm going through all the teams here. Yeah, no. Nah. Roosters? Yeah. Roosters guy? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, my old man followed them. I was just always a Roosters supporter. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Nah, I like your chances this year. Oh, so do I. So do I. Who are the Eels versing? Eels got Storm. Eels got Storm? Storm, we're going to pump them. Is that what you're hoping, or? I can't imagine Storm losing twice. Oh. Manly will get up over the rabbits. <laughs> and then it'll be, uh, who will it be? It's going to be Canberra uh, versus Manly. Canberra versus Manly? Rabbit, uh, Roosters versus Storm. Roosters versus Storm. Manly versus Roosters final. Mate, how good would this be if, uh, you know, Kronk gets his last win, grand final win? Yeah. Be awesome. it's huge. I mean, it wouldn't be good for your team, but, no, but you know. see, it will suck, man. Fuck off. <laughs> nah, actually, because my, I love James Desco because I'm okay. from New South Wales, won the series for us, you know, the greatest man in the world, or the GOAT, in fact. He is the GOAT, so James Tedesco. if uh, a team were to win outside of Manly, it'd be Roosters purely because of James Tedesco. Yeah, he's pretty good. Shout out to James Desco, follow the podcast. <laughs> That's the good shit. Um, okay, so do you follow... You don't follow, like, AFL or anything like that? Yeah, not really an AFL guy. No. Um, watch a little bit of Rugby Union. But yep. Overall. League fella. Yeah. Through and through. I can get around that. Yeah. I've, uh, I haven't been watching as much League. Mm. I mean, in the last couple of years. Just, I always find there's a lot more off, off, uh, off field drama. Off field drama. But, I mean... I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm never really going to change it. So. You get paid the big bucks, mate. you got to spend it somehow. Apparently. And that's on cocaine and hookies. But yeah. 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 <laughs> and pokies, mate. Most recently. If you get the pokies. Ah, uh, right. Fucking hell. Pokies. What a waste. All right. <laughs> How much more time have you got? Do you have to run back no, soon? No, no. Whatever you're ready. All right. Easy. Well, fav- yeah. So, we know you. What's your favorite coffee spot? It can't be next door. Okay? No, nah, it's not next door. No, nah, I didn't um, think so. Place called Blackstar. Okay. In West End on Thomas Street. Okay. It's this little quiet hippie sort of setup where they yep. do um, all these different types of coffee. Okay. The reason I like it is because it's just everyone keeps it themselves. The coffee's good. Yeah, they're yeah. Friendly enough. Yeah, they're just not in your fucking they're face. They're not in your face with, yeah. you know, rainbows and sunshines and shit like that. Mate, I'll, um, I'll, I'll give you a shout out uh, while you're over here. You have to go down to, have you ever heard of Micro Lot? No. It's down on uh, it's down on Riding Road. Micro lot. Yeah, so yeah. literally, uh, you head out here on the on the uh, roundabout, yeah. and it's the second one that you take before you come down Hawthorne Road. Yeah, okay. Nice. And you just pre- pretty much head down there, just go in there, and like they're the friendliest people ever. Yeah. But they make it make it fucking mean coffee. Yeah, true. They um, it's like it's made from their lot in Colombia. Like yeah, it's true. their own lot. Oh, true. So they pr- for like bring it over and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's mad. So, yeah, it's pretty mad. I'll tell you what. Do you do you like um? 
you like making your own coffee? I uh, I bought one of those. I don't know what they call them. Maybe the filter, the filter press, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, AeroPress yeah. type thing. Yeah, no, AeroPress sucks. Yeah, and uh, it was it was it's just fine. too much. It was fine, but it took too long. Yeah, just take you just want your fucking coffee now. Yeah, so I got the perfect solution. So this is um this goes, comes from Shane. So pretty much I'm stealing this from Shane, but I'm get telling everyone about it. So it's pretty much you you go you buy your, your beans. Yeah. And then what you do from there is you get them to grind it up into espresso. Yeah. So espresso grind. And then what you go and do is, you know those big cordial jugs? Yeah. You, like the Sistema ones that you get, like you usually used to put your cordial in? Yeah. Two or three liters of that, okay? Get a big one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come home. You then pour anywhere from, I've found like the perfect ratio at the moment for me is like a one to three. Yeah. Um, grind to water. And this is for anyone out there. Grind to water. And then what you do is you pour in the water, fill it all the way up. And then you're gonna leave it on the bench just to sit for about an hour. Yeah. But while when you uh, when you leave it to sit, just make sure you stir all the beans through and all the grind through mm-hmm. so that it soaks into the water. And then after about an hour, hour and a half, what you didn't then do is you bang it and like you stir it again. So all the stuff, all the grind pretty much sits to the bottom. Mm. And then you tuck it in the fridge for 24 hours. Mm. And then after that, you got perfect cold brew coffee. Done. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty mad, man. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give Shane put that, another... Put that little recipe up there. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give Shane another shout out because I stole that from him. But I mean, like, he's he's been a barista for quite some time before he was doing, like, coaching and stuff. So, he, like... That's no, tough. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty awesome, man. And it's like, I think in terms of, like, monetary saving as well, mm. like, he, like, I bought some mad beans just from down at Bellissimo. Yeah. And that's really another good place if you like coffee. Bellissimo. Yeah, Bellissimo. Yeah. Um, like, I just bought some beans, but it's like... Without sounding like a fucking wanker, like you can actually taste the undertones. Yeah. So it's like you know, like coffee's not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, like I do like nice coffee, and, yeah. it's, and it's nice that you can actually like taste the under undertones as well, and not have to fucking pay out your ass. Like, yeah. I mean, especially if you're buying, you know, like two coffees a day, it's like yeah. ten bucks, right? Yeah. Crazy shit, but yeah. So like, and then what you do is like, I will usually go, I'll weigh it, so mm. it's like on, but I'll go like 150 mils of the cold brew concentrate mm. and then I chuck like 150 mils of milk in and then yeah, chuck true. some ices ices ice cubes not ices so Ooh. chuck ice cubes in controversy yeah <laughs> ice cubes in and then you're all sweet with yeah, fucking delicious coffee yeah right man I'll give it a try put the recipe up and then uh... yeah that's uh that's for anyone out there I would definitely give it a go yeah okay so Bellissimo you got micro lot just trying to think Fonzie Abbott's really good too Have yeah Fonzie Fonzie. yeah and then um Black Sheep. Where are Black Sheep? Uh, they have a place out at... Ooh, out at Rockley Markets, but I'm not sure where their flagship store is. Yeah, okay. But, um, yeah, if you ever get out there, it is uh, probably, it's probably uh, I reckon, a good 9 out of 10 coffee. Yeah, right. I've, like, the, uh, the coffees I've had around here, there's some really fucking good ones, but then there are really some fucking shit ones as where well. Where do you go if you're close to here? Uh, micro Lot. I will go to Michael. Ah, he's following us back. There we go. That's what we like to see. He just followed us back, everyone. Good man, good man. You can cross that off the list. Done. <laughs> That's <laughs> one thing I achieved today. Yeah, yeah. Who who else has access to your to your business one? Obviously, um, all the partners or no. Nah, so there's uh, one of the girls works for us called Charlie. Does our socials. Does oh, like cool, cool. Job. So yeah, we're all incompetent. So she's <laughs> she's far from incompetent. She's very confident. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, so we got best lives. Hmm. Favorite books. Cool, good question. Um, um go fiction and non-fiction. Like obviously you've got some strength training ones, yeah. but like favorite books after that. Mate, uh I'm going to be completely honest, I hate fiction. Fair. I so do I. Can't stand it. I think it's a waste of time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not really a creative person at all. Yeah. Um not that I'm, you know, data driven, but I'm definitely not one to go off with the fairies and read about the dragons or yeah, whatever okay. it may be. Yeah. Not that all fiction's about that. <laughs> um, there's this book that I just finished reading, which sounds really kind of cliche in the name, but it's How to Build an Online Business. Okay. Um, I forget the author's name. There was a lady who... I'm actually going to Google it right now because it's worth shouting her out because it was unreal. What's the book go into there? Obviously, building an online business. Yeah, well, basically... <laughs> Thanks um, for pointing that out, Mr. Obvious. Mr. Obvious. But no, it actually goes into so much depth. And, and the thing that I really like about it is it gives you all these um, practical tips and tricks. For example, if you're doing a blog, 
let's mm-hmm. say, things to do and include in your blog, like maybe having word count or maybe having these um, messages go through the blog or oh, yeah. if you're... Um, like saying, subliminal messages. Even at the Yeah. Yeah. If I'm at the uh, right, I hope okay. everyone gets that fucking... I'm so glad you know that it? Simpsons quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend, if Lindsay, my friend listens to this, he'll get this. Yeah. Uh, Bernadette Schwert, How to Build an Online Business, uh, Australia's Top Digital Disruptors reveal their secrets and it just goes into everything that you consider doing online from creating a business through ASIC right up to marketing to socials um, has a lot of case studies of other Australian people who have done well online oh really um, it's really really good I think maybe paid like you know $19 for it yeah. but you get shit loads worth of value interesting I'm, um, I'm, I'm going to have to write that book down so yeah. building an online business you um, hear that everyone building an online business so how to build an online business um Second one I read recently was a book called Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Um, he talks basically about like an outlier product. So yep. let's say you're marketing to the masters with a uh, male hypertrophy get lean program. Mm-hmm. It's like, cool, man, how many males out there that want to do that? Whereas yeah. he kind of uh, recreates the argument and saying you should be um, looking for a male who has uh, kids and a family who doesn't have time to train Mm. but wants to be lean and build up his strength, but can only afford to train twice a week. So, so it's like real niche it down. Yeah, yeah, niche it down and make that the outlier versus going product for everyone. It's product for a certain someone. Okay, yeah. I guess I guess then that the whole beer scene, that is, is like like finding finding the right person who actually is that, right? Yeah. But I mean, then that you're always going to be that guy to come to mm. when you find that market. Yeah. Yeah, cool. The thing is, draw card, you know, if you Google hypertrophy or Google, I want to gain muscle Brisbane, like imagine how many gyms would come up. Yeah, yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Whereas if you Googled, you know, um, let's see, using you guys, for example, train the trainers um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brisbane, yeah. you're going to be first on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, versus if you went PT education, yeah. you get, you know. Fucking AI, yeah, 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 all that shit. All that gay. Go. Very good. Um, mm, I have a couple of other questions. What is your favourite feat of strength you've ever seen? It doesn't have to yeah, be. Yeah. yeah. Um, it just okay. could be anything. Two. Two. So, one, when I went to uh, Sebastian Oreb's uh, strength training thing, yep. I think it was back in 2015, mm-hmm. um, there was a little... Not little, he's strong as this Greek guy. I think his name was Krista. Okay. Krista? I forget exactly, but he was a, he's a Brisbane guy. Would have weighed 75 kilos tops, probably would have been less. Mm-hmm. And he then lifted 300 easy. Really? Easy. Fuck. Yeah. Like, I was in disbelief watching it. Because <laughs> I remember when I did 205, I felt like my spine was going to snap. I was like, <laughs> Pop off. <laughs> and to see this guy who weighed less than me, then lift 100 kilos more than me, I was just like, man, that's just incredible. That's pretty hectic, isn't it? I love, um, I was actually having a chat to a friend online this morning about, um, yeah, do you know Yuri Belkin? Heard the name. You need to follow him, man. He's Belkin. fucking the strongest mofo. Like, um, we were just chatting about, you know, like, everyone's always like, oh, the short levers and mm. whatever, but it's like, mate, they're fucking strong. Yeah. It's like, this guy, I think he just deadlifted, like, Fucking like four twenty or four thirty. True. Yeah, it's he's and he's Some weight. he's fucking strong. And he like benches like two hundred and something. True. Yeah, he squats. I don't know. Like, I think I'm gonna say like around three hundred as well. But he's not. He's not like fucking like huge. Like he's he's jack. But you know, it's just like people are strong. Mm. And I, but then I think people get like jealous about that as well. Yeah. And then just blame it on all the on all the levers. But. Yeah. There's also a guy who comes to the gym, name's Freddie Burke. He's um, one of the front rowers, the mm-hmm. place for one of the clubs we train. Yep. And he deadlifted 300, which, you know, for a prop, is pretty fucking strong. Yeah. But it was, like, pretty close. I can't remember exactly when it was, but it was close to in-season slash pre-season. So the dude's running. The dude's scrumming. The dude works full-time. Yeah. He's not a professional athlete. Yeah. And he can still pull that sort of weight. Yeah. Did it look good, though? Did it look clean, or...? It was, like, a grind. Yeah, but it wasn't a. It know, wasn't like full banana back central. No, no, no. no. Okay. It was pretty solid. Yeah, but like considering he has to then pack a scrum, and run around for eighty minutes, like 
to do both was just yeah. Th- there are some unreal hybrid athletes out there. Yeah, very unreal. He's just, he's from uh, South New Zealand. This white guy, I think he's from where the farms are and stuff. Just a tough bastard. Mate, there are uh, they're bred different in the country. Yeah. They definitely are. I've found a lot of country boys are just fucking like. What yeah. does Luke say? Like they're cornbread country boys. Yeah. They're just fucking <laughs> this animal. Man, it's tough. Yeah, literally, literally. Fucking city boys, eh? Yeah, this house, mate. We, yeah, we don't have any house. That's a six of our piccolos. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 I don't get piccolos, but I mean, <laughs> three shot latte. No, flat white. Yeah, three shot, two shot. Just depends. Yeah, yeah. just depends. Bit of soy. Yeah, mate. Get those moves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hear that, everyone? I love soy milk. It's my favourite. No, nah, soy milk browns out there listening. Shout him. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, I actually don't mind uh, almond milk, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shane, Shane Austin, uh, Quartz have got me onto the onto the almond milk. Yeah. Channel. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not as good as you know, you know, uh, Paul's like full cream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, that is the most delicious shit. Yeah. I love um like. There was one point where I had it sitting in my fridge and I hadn't touched it for the week and it was still all good. Went to pour it in my cup, but the layer of cream over the top was so uh, thick, it just didn't pour. You get the spoon out. Yeah, I literally, oh, dude. No, I just put it in there and get the cream out. Yeah, yeah. Like, look at it. It's so good. If anyone likes full cream milk, I think it's Paul's, what is it? Do you know it? Paul's it's full. Yeah, yeah, yellow lid. Yeah, yeah, label. yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul's full cream, like full like double cream it's a hectic shit alright we've got one last question I yeah. wanna I wanna ask you how would you rate have a meniscus oh uh, <laughs> give me some um, give me some context uh, okay so I'm gonna have it like full stitched up I mean the person in question is gonna have it re-stitched having surgery on it Your surgery yeah huge um, and then yeah so that's pretty much uh, it was like Full full blown uh, BJJ accent. This person I know, not myself, obviously. Yeah, of course not. Um, person in question. Yeah, the person in question. Um, and then yeah, just like full on, yeah, like full knee flexion, and then that's how it went. So were you? I was pretty much. It was like forced knee flexion, and then it's pretty much just like driven into the medial meniscus. Yeah, yeah right. Just like that. That's fun. Yeah. Did you get the tap? Hey. Did you get the tap? What do you mean the tap? Like, like were you were you tapping someone or they they tapping you? Ah, uh, no, it was actually um, it, had a, it was kind of weird because like the person in question and Luke were <laughs> so sparring at BJ uh, Day, and I got I got pushed back in like full knee flexion. Oh, sorry, yeah, full knee flexion. And then I kind of like came out of it like that felt weird. Yeah, but it didn't hurt. Yeah, and then after that we were just like rolling around. And like I was trying to sit back onto my onto my left knee in like a weird position, like you do in BJJ. Yeah. And it just kept going, going donk donk donk, and just I was loose. Like, yeah. And I was yeah. like, that doesn't feel very good. And like Luke, Luke was like, is that your wrist? And I was like, nah, mate, that's not my wrist. That's my knee. And then yeah, had it. Had got it scans in, done. Yeah. Or the whole nine yards. So what are you getting? Complete clean up. Yeah. So I'm getting it cleaned up, but actually stitched up. True. So yeah. I would. Uh, just would, just a rough idea. I would see if it's good. Yeah. As far as. Um. Typically, what our physios recommend when they kind of transfer to us is yep. a lot of that BMO, mm-hmm. out of glute strengthening stuff yep. to start with. Um, a lot of it is tolerance as well. Mm-hmm. Like if you go too much knee flexion early, you might feel like a bag of shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think with you being you know, a little bit more hypertrophied and, the person and, in question. and well-trained. Yeah, the person yeah. in question, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> which is sealed. Yeah. You'd probably be able to progress quite fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd probably start with as the... Physios like to say, inner quads, outer glutes. Yeah, nice. Bit of VM work. Yeah. Bit of VM. I really like the Peterson step up. I think that would be kind of my first sort of... Peterson step up. Yeah. So, you know the one? Yeah, yeah. 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 Very um, good. That would be my uh, you go first to. point of contact. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, so finally, let's get up your... Uh, get up your horoscope. This is what we do. Oh, okay. Horoscope. Yeah. How do I find that? Uh, just on your phone. Yep. So just... What month are you born? May. May, so you're Gemini then, or? Taurus. Taurus. Oh! Horoscope. Taurus today. Taurus. Try and find a really big one. And then uh, what you have to do is, like, you have to read it into the into the thing. Okay. Like, you're almost going to fuck, fuck the mic. Just, like, really okay. sexual. Are you ready? <laughs> Am I doing America's days or Australia's days? <laughs> uh, whatever day you want, my friend. I'll do, I'll do September 19th. Yeah. That's the day we're doing it. Yeah. There's tension in the air. <laughs> sure, but there's little you can do about it. 
the harsh atmosphere is stark contrast to the frivolity you felt over the last several days. It seems you received some good news. Perhaps you are finally recognised for your hard work. Don't brag about your accomplishments. It would only exacerbate the situation. Be patient. Avoid confrontation. Sign up to the newsletter. <laughs> well done, sir. Very well done. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. No, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. It's been, was, uh, been good fun. Big that games. was awesome. That's the uh, first of many podcasts, right? I hope so. Yeah, fuck yeah. We'll, um, we'll, we'll keep going. But uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. Um, as always... Like, share, comment, all that sort of good shit. No, I don't, I don't ever say that. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, good shit.